A new Blender add-on called OpenScatter has just released, and it's already catching some attention. This tool is open source and available for free on GitHub. There's also a small purchase option on the Blender market if someone wants to help support the developer. But that fee isn't about unlocking extra features, it's simply a way to contribute to ongoing development. OpenScatter is designed to make scattering objects across surfaces in Blender much easier. Instead of manually placing trees, rocks, or patches of grass one by one, this add-on takes care of the whole process and helps create natural-looking scenes with less hassle. OpenScatter is a tool that automates the distribution of objects on a selected surface, which is called an emitter in Blender. The add-on works by creating scatter systems. These systems act as independent layers, so different types of objects can be managed separately. For example, one layer could be dedicated to ground vegetation, another to scattered rocks, and yet another to trees. This layered approach keeps a scene organized and makes it easier to adjust or modify individual parts later on. Because OpenScatter is open source, its source code is available for anyone who wants to take a look, tweak it, or even contribute improvements. With all the core features available for free on GitHub, and only a tiny support option on Blender Market, this add-on is both accessible and community-friendly. The main goal of OpenScatter is to automate the placement of objects on a surface. The workflow begins by picking an emitter. Once the emitter is in place, a scatter system is created by hitting the plus icon. Each scatter system acts independently, so it is possible to have one for vegetation, one for rocks, and another for trees, all coexisting without interfering with each other. After a scatter system is set up, the next step is to choose the objects to scatter. OpenScatter allows the selection of either a single object or an entire collection of objects. Using a collection is particularly useful when some variation is needed. For instance, when scattering trees, having several different tree models in one collection helps avoid a repetitive look. The add-on then provides several settings to control how the objects are distributed. Adjusting the density setting controls how many objects appear per unit area. This is important to avoid a scene that looks either too sparse or overly crowded. A seed value parameter adds a bit of randomness to the scatter pattern so that every instance is a little different. There are options to adjust both scale and rotation and these can be set to apply uniformly or with some variation. This flexibility helps create a more natural look and there is also an option to prevent objects from overlapping. OpenScatter comes with several advanced features that offer even more control over how objects are placed. One key option is the ability to use texture masks to influence object distribution. With texture masks, a texture such as a noise pattern can be applied to the emitter to create variations in how objects are placed. Using a texture mask helps to create an irregular, more organic pattern, which can break up the monotony that sometimes comes with a completely random scatter. Another useful feature is the ability to use vertex groups. Vertex groups allow certain areas of the emitter to be specifically marked for object placement or, conversely, to be left out. This can be really handy when there is a need to control where objects appear. For example, keeping rocks away from a clear pathway, or ensuring that grass shows up only in specific patches. Although setting up vertex groups takes a bit of extra time, the added control can result in a much more deliberate and precise final arrangement. Environmental controls are also integrated into OpenScatter. The add-on lets you adjust scattering based on factors like slope and elevation. In a natural environment, trees and other vegetation typically grow on gentle slopes and within certain elevation ranges. By setting parameters to restrict object placement on steep surfaces or above a particular elevation, the scattered objects follow a more realistic pattern without manual tweaking for each one. This feature mimics natural growth conditions and adds to the overall authenticity of a scene. Proximity settings further refine how objects are distributed. These settings allow objects to either avoid or cluster around specific areas based on their distance from certain geometry or curves. For instance, if a scene requires denser vegetation along the edge of a pathway, the proximity settings can be adjusted to ensure that objects group together in that area. 
Similarly, curves can guide the scatter along a natural path, such as following the line of a river or a winding road. Dynamic effects are another important aspect of open scatter. The add-on includes options for wind animation and collision simulation. Wind animation applies a subtle procedural noise to these scattered objects, causing them to move gently as if influenced by a soft breeze. This effect is particularly effective for elements like grass and leaves, giving them a bit of life and motion. Collision simulation allows scattered objects to react when they come into contact with other elements of the scene. For example, if another object moves through a field of scattered items, the collision settings can cause those objects to shift or tilt naturally, adding an interactive quality to the scene. Working with many scattered objects can slow down performance, but OpenScatter tackles this by reducing the load during editing. For example, viewport density control shows fewer objects in the viewport while still retaining full detail for the final render, which helps keep the system responsive even in busy scenes. In addition, proxy meshes serve as simplified placeholders for the full resolution models. These proxies reduce the system load during setup and then automatically swap in with the detailed versions when rendering, making it much easier to handle high detail scenes. Finally, camera calling ensures that only objects visible to the active camera are rendered, further reducing computational load and memory usage in complex environments. OpenScatter has a lot going for it, but there are a few spots that could be better. For one, it doesn't come with its own asset library, you need to supply your own models. This extra step might slow you down if you don't already have the assets you need. It would be cool if there were a curated set of free models or a list of recommended resources to make life easier for beginners. Also, getting the perfect scatter effect can involve a lot of trial and error. Tweaking parameters like density, scale, randomness and distribution might not give you the ideal result right away. It would be great if there were some presets or guided setups to give you a solid starting point, making it easier to achieve the look you want quickly, especially for those who prefer a faster workflow. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.